Hello and welcome to No Man's Sky, everybody. Alon Paul here. So we're doing a quick video this morning. It's not going to be a very long one. I just wanted to uh, do a just a standard run-through video of finding Atlantic multi-tools, maybe showing you my new base that I've set up, uh, things like that. Um, there's been some discussion. Let's let's go over a couple things. So I'm in a different system here right now. This is my main save, in case you're wondering. And I'm in a system that happens to have this nice planet here. It's a Corvax system. It's a three-star uh, economy. And I'm looking for Atlanted multi-tools. Now, the whole purpose behind this video is I'm going to discuss a few things with you. And let me go ahead and get to this planet here while we're doing it. There we go. So in regards to the update, it looks like we have not received an update just yet. A lot of people are speculating that with the sale going on in the stores for No Man's Sky, just that time of year, you know, it's getting towards Christmas and everybody's going to be buying stuff. They wanted to put it on sale and that's fine. Um, will there be an update? That's the big debate. Now I'm kind of, uh, instead of like an 80, 85% chance of an update, I'm kind of dropping mine down to 50. I think we're just going to do the Redux and then it's going to be followed by an update at the beginning of the year. Probably with Twitch drops and the whole nine yards to resurge some interest in No, no Man's Sky. Perfectly fine. Um, I mean, it's your company, Sean. You do whatever you want, my friend. I'm along for the ride and enjoying every moment of it. So I'm here to look for Atlanted multi-tools today after discussing that. So here's what we've got going on. There's a thing about multi-tools that has been brought up. There's been a debate from a one of our gamers. Uh, she hails from Australia called Granny Loves Games, or Granny Loves Gaming, I think it's called, my, my bad, either way, um, who shows us that she's hunting for Atlantid multi-tools, she really likes them, and she shows putting upgrades on these multi-tools. After she's upgraded the multi-tool, she's adding blueprints to it that we've never seen before. None of us. I've checked other channels, Beeblebum, Zane, Jason, all of them. No one has seen these upgrades before. I just got one from a monolith for one of my multi-tools. I'm going to go ahead and... Can I switch to my multi-tool right now? No, I can't. Let's go ahead and look for a monolith real quick. I'm going to do that right now. That looks like it right there. Monolith. How far away? Let's go ahead and zoom over there. And when we get out of the ship, I'll talk about it a little bit more. Apparently, she has blueprints in her inventory. So, in other words, when she's done upgrading a uh, multi-tool... You can add in, you know, weapons like Pulse Spitter and, you know, Scatter Blast, whatever you want to add to your multi-tool. She's adding in upgrades and blueprints that we've never seen before. They look to be, like when you add them in, they look to appear to be a damaged slot. That's funny, right next to an archive. That's what it looks like on the, on the multi-tool, which would be kind of fitting for Atlantids, so. All right, so let me show you the multi-tool first of all. I'm going to go back to my staff, which is what I was holding at the time that the upgrade came. And it appeared up here called an unlicensed atomic projector. I've never seen it before, but this one came in as an X-Class upgrade and automatically was installed on my weapon. Pretty good damage rate. You see plus 4 damage and plus 18 fire rate, which is better than some of the other things I have. And you see plus 3 damage on some of these. And the thing about it is, is it added it in as a third upgrade. Well, I don't know if it damaged the one that was on here or it added a new one to it. I have no idea. No idea. So very, very strange. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this because I don't have it as part of my upgrade list when I go in here for my technology. It's not in there, even if I choose a different weapon. So very, very interested in what we're going to find out with regards to this. So let me head over here. I'm looking for a four square supercharged slots. So that's two. I'm getting my words because if you look at my catalog under Corvax, I am closing in on 350. I need uh, 12 more words here. So four more of these things I find and we're ready to go. I don't know what I'll get for it, but we'll see. Maybe a new title. I don't know. There we go. Let's see what kind of weapon they've got here. This particular system, I've never found anything less than a B-class. They've either been B or A. There's another A class. So we got our supercharged slot over here. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do with these. So let me switch over to a different multi tool. This one, Touch of Peace, which is the same kind of multi tool. Uh, so when we get in here, 
See? So I'm going to compare it to what I've got. And I'm going to go ahead and exchange it. So this A class I'm going to take in. And then I'm going to try to upgrade it and see what I come up with. Alright, so now we got that. Let's go ahead and do the storyline and see what we can get. And I've done a bunch of these. And the answers, you can't really get a wrong answer. But some answers give you rewards and some don't. Let's put it that way. So the monolith live with Atlanta DM shows me a galaxy of stars, glittering points of light in all directions. I hear a voice that hums with the words of millions. Be the convergence. No individual entity has value. None will remember them. So let me see. Pity the Convergence. No individual entity has value. None will remember them. So we should pity them. Okay. As the voice fades, I feel pinprank. One of the stars flares briefly, then flickers to nothing. A temporary sensation and significant to the tapestry before me. So it says to pity them. So that means we remember them, get them, or do nothing. Forgetting them wouldn't make any sense. That wouldn't be pity them. But it did mention that you pity them because no one's going to remember them. That would be forgetting, but I don't think that's the problem here. It's asking us to pity them. So I think that means remember. I have done remember before, I think. I know I've done this one. I don't get anything for it. So let me try number one, and next time this comes up, I'll do number three. I scrabble out the memory of the distant star, but my mind will not hold on to it. The galaxy is a multitude. No lone star can be perceived when your sight extends so, so far. My procession warps as the vision fades away and life returns to scale. It doesn't look like I got anything out of that. So let me check my disco uh, not my discoveries. I did it again. I keep doing that. Go to my inventory and my exosuit. I get nothing. Okay. All right. So let's drop down. We'll look for another monolith in a minute. But first things first, we're going to head to the space station. I'm going to show what we do with the multi-tool. Now, just to show, I got 300,000 nanites. I've got plenty of nanites to upgrade with, okay? But that's something I want to hang on to because nanites, while I can get them pretty easily, um, I don't want to just keep wasting them, you know? Oh, those ships coming in are just driving me nuts. There we go. I don't want to just blow all the nanites I've got and get rid of them. Um, so we're going to use the nanites, but... Oh, they want to probe my ship again. How oh, weird. I don't have anything on board. Leave me alone. There we go. And we'll show you a little trick. Now, the trick I do here, if you want to upgrade and you have enough nanites, let's say you have 100,000 nanites, you can take a C-class all the way to an, to an S-class. Here's what you do. Just as you're exiting your ship, check the time on your phone, on your watch, on your computer. Know what time you got out. And then just go up here and upgrade. Then we know we have one supercharged slot. Who knows where the others will appear. I only need to upgrade this one once since it's already in A class. So number three. And then we'll check real quick and see where the upgrade appeared. We have no more upgrades that have appeared anywhere. So we're probably not going to get a four square. Okay. Well, I'll show you as long as you have the multi two upgrades available. Number one. See? And there, and there's the fourth one. So this becomes useless to me. It's not really going to help me out any, but it's a decent upgrade. So I look at my time. I come back to here. See, I don't want to choose 52. I got out of my ship at 51. And you'll just restore all your nanites. So that'll take care of that. Sometimes the multi-tool changes on the planet when you do this. But it didn't last time I did it. So we're in good shape there. So... What we're going to do is we'll go for probably about another 20 minutes or so, and then I'm going to show you my new base that I have created. I found a new planet in a dissonant system. It's a Corvax dissonant system. The dissonant system has two dissonant planets on it, strangely enough. And the one planet that I found I would, I'm making my base on is absolutely beautiful. The only storms it has is the gravity storms, which are really, really cool, as we all know. Now, what do you know? Landing platform. Okay, let's do... Wrong one. Let's do the planetary chart. Let's see where this one appears. The alien monolith is detected right there. That's the first time that's ever happened that it detected one right next to me. If I had just been looking, I would have found it myself. Why are you throwing yourself all the way over there? 
Well, that's cool. Okay, we just need four more of these, and I have my maximum number of Corvax words. There we go. All right. I want to thank you all for joining me today, too. For watching this video, I really appreciate it. Please hit the like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I'm so close to a thousand. So close. We're almost there. See, now this is pretty good, but it's still too far away for me, as you can see. So we can't get the four square out of this one. So we're not even going to bother. I'll just go ahead and jump back out. All right, let's see the story here. The clock was approaching the new room into the air. Hear the voice of the Corvax echoes, and I close my eyes. Okay, here we go. Save the something mind, something the convergence. So I'm, I'm assuming save the Atlantid mine, or, or whatever the uh, different word would be here, and something convergence. I always see this, and I choose wrong almost every time. The voice is clear now. The man, my judgment, the mind of the di divergent entity, divergent entity is placed before me. And their place in the Convergence is in question. Okay, so the Corvax Convergence is what we're talking about here. Do we delete them, permit them, or quarantine them? I have done delete and permit. So I'm going to do the quarantine this time. Let's see what I come up with. I cannot make a decision like this. The system is so vital as a whole and so cool up close. To place the, that maintenance on one individual, on me, I cannot do it. The voice resonates with disappointment at my failure to act decisively, and the vision ends. It looks like I get nothing out of that one. All right, so it's got to be one of the other two next time. Um, and I'm pretty sure they didn't give me anything. Just want to check anyway. Yep, nothing. So, disappointed them this time. That's okay. I have learned my lesson. Standing decrease Corvax. No matter what choice I got, I got a standing decrease Corvax. So... I'm not sure where my standing is with them anymore. Um, yeah, see, my standing is really, really high, though. They, they haven't really got me up there. It'd have to really come down below 100, I think. I guess we'll find out. Okay, let's find the next one. Okay, the one that's present is not it. Monolith, again. Oh, they both appeared over there. Is that it? That's the plaque. So it's this one. Okay. About four minutes away. We'll go ahead and go up to the upper atmosphere and swing on over. There we go. You notice I'm not touching the plaque. The plaque doesn't seem to give me anything or do anything other than be a Corvax plaque, and that's it. So we can go over there if we need to build up our uh, uh, standing with the Corvax. If I drop it down too low with all the stuff I'm doing with the Atlantids. Okay, one, two, and three. All right, let's see what kind of weapon we have on this one. Come on. Hello. Not sure what that was about. Okay. B class as well. They're too far apart to have any usefulness to me whatsoever. Okay. Like I said, I, I've yet to get a C class out of this thing. I hear the distant voices of the Corvax entities who once worshipped here, and yet there are other voices. Discordant, unmistakable, growing ever louder. Close my eyes and listen. Many were erased at the time of her death. In darkness and in glass, we waited. Interesting. I open my eyes, but all I see is darkness. There's a click with a rush. I, fear the, I hear the screams all around me. There are electronic howls. Another click. The stench of burning floods my skull. A sickening blend of sweetness and smoke. A click, and I can see. The earth is riven. Everything burns. So we're waiting for her. Do we flee? Do we scream? Do we just dislocate? Hmm. I think I've done dislocate every single time. I'm going to do flee just to see what happens. I'm curious. I don't think that's the right answer, but I'm going to try it. Another click. It's all gone. The screams, the smell, the fire, and chaos. It is a comfort at first. But this is not the oblivion of sleep. I'm still here, present and aware as a drift in the endless nothing, and I have 
All I have to remember is that final image of destruction. Seconds, hours, days pass. Planet grows. I feel every tick and it is just... It is still just nothing. And then another click. The vision ends. I am returned. I've never felt such relief. I don't think we got anything out of that. Yeah. Nothing. Okay, it's possible I get an upgrade. Because I've gotten upgrades down here and I didn't realize it, so... No, nothing so far. Interesting. Okay. On to our next, uh... Monolith. Okay. Okay, that is our plaque. That is a ancient ruin, so we'll have to do it again. Do another circle. Yep, oh, right there. Monolith it is. Okay, a little further away, so we're going to hit the nighttime side of this planet here in just a second. It's funny, I recorded earlier and was doing all this and realized that my video was still stuck on a different game. Recording a black screen while talking, it doesn't really help much. Welcome to the blackness, everybody. There we go. All right. Part next to the first one. How are we doing on the words? Where do we at? 344. We need six more. We'll get three more here. All right. And let's see what weapon we got. Okay. An A-class this time. Two supercharged... Nope. One supercharged slot right here and one down here. Again, not going to help us any. If any of you are interested in this, we will just go ahead and do this real quick. You can see the coordinates at the top right. Negative 3361, negative 175, 61. And then for the planet itself, bottom left corner, there are your glyphs. Bird, bird, boat, TP, sunset, bird, spiral, dragonfly, face, rocket, spider, and I always call that either hands in the air or YMCA. It's up to you when you want to call it. There we go. All right, so that's the planet it's at. Eisentum Galaxy. Very, very clear about that. Not Euclid. This is the Eisentum Galaxy. Tenth Galaxy. A lot of people have bases in the Eisentum because it's a very peaceful galaxy. Lots of paradise planets. So keep that in mind. All right. Light of the Antidium flowing through the valley. Well, strangely comforting. I hear a deep and steady drone reassuring familiar. The sounds, these words, lull me and my vision swims as I fall into their embrace. Become the Void Mother. Okay. Oh, I cannot see them. I feel them. Countless entities crawl across me. The children swarm in my every fold. This should repulse me, but instead I feel an indescribable joy. I know these tiny beings are safe, and this brings me the deepest happiness. So, it's asking you to be the Void Mother. Do we breathe? Do we cry? Do we sing? Now, every single time I do this, I always choose sing, because it's like, you're overjoyed. But, should we breathe or should we cry? So, there's two other choices we can make here. I'm going to work my way up on this one. I'm going to try cry next, and then I'll try breathe. So let's go do cry. I let the emotion flow through me. These tiny life forms are mine to protect, and I know each of these, their lives intimately. The feeling is indescribable. And then I feel myself start to crumble. I'm being pulled apart from within, from without. I cannot tell. My children scream as their world begins to collapse. As I am carved into a thousand pieces, there is pain. But more than that, there is anger. Anger for each of my children. I am their home, and I have failed them. As my final piece is destroyed, the vision ends, and I am whole once more, but my children. Wow. That is something, huh? That was definitely different from the last time I did this. Okay. So there we go. With that one. Let's go ahead and continue on. That was a very weird one. Just keep choosing it until the monolith selects. There we go. And it looks like it appeared right in front of me. Okay. 
Let's go into space. That one's a little bit further away than we'd like to be comfortable with in traveling straight. There we go. And in case you're wondering why you're not seeing pulse lines, it's because I have a... Uh, I do have one mod added that gets rid of pulse lines. It does better for videos when you're viewing them online. You don't get all the distortion when you're viewing. All right, here we go. This should get me my 350 words anyway. One. That's 340, 48 that should be. 49, and let's see how it happens if we get our 50. Let me see what happens. I'm curious. I want to see if I get some kind of an achievement. No? Nothing? Let's check. Ugh. I'm an interpreter, but I have to get to 450 now. Uh, well, that's okay. It'll likely happen with all my Atlantid multi-tool searches, anyway. It's the one language, the Corvax is the one language I've gotten this far with. Let's see what kind of multi-tool we got. It's first C-Class I've come across. First one. So, I am just gonna go ahead and get past it. We'll go past it. Let's get the storyline and go from there. All right, I place my hands upon this relic, and I feel the power of this ancient sight pulse through my veins. Words begin to take shape in my mind. Choose the destiny of the disruptor. Doors into something may not always blink open. Stay open, I think. Doors into oblivion, maybe? Doors into your mind may not always stay open? Okay. I blink, and when my eyes open, I've exchanged places with the monolith. I tower over was once myself. I, they, perform a ritual upon the stone. I feel every glyph they carve into my skin. Against my will, I am torn asunder. The portal opens within me, and the being below crosses its threshold. So you're a portal. You're not the monolith. You're a portal. So, being crosses the threshold. What do we do with the being? So, let's think back to the... Artemis days. Do we close our mind or open our mind? Now, every single time I've opened my mind, but what happens when we close our mind? Does that mean they have the fate of Artemis? Like they get trapped in this interdimensional travel? Let's see what happens. Close. The portal slams shut. They are banished to the in-between. Ooh. And they will never see our universe again. And yet, they're not entirely gone. I know they are there somewhere. Deep down, I feel them haunting me. I am released from the vision, though I cannot shake the feeling of being watched. Whoa. That's creepy. I have to admit, that was about the creepiest one I've had so far. And, ooh, we got a hypnotic eye out of it. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. Okay, that was really, really creepy. So, uh, but I'm not going to use that again next time. That was a little too creepy for my taste. All right. Um, here we go. Monolith, monolith, monolith. There we go. Nope, that's not it. Must be over here. That's the monolith. All right. Let's check out our next weapon. So we didn't get anything for getting 350 words in the Corvax language, other than I'll be able to understand them much, much better now. So this was pretty good. This is pretty good. So I'll spend a few more minutes looking for, for probably one or two more monoliths, and then we'll go ahead and check out the base, and we'll wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed the watching this. Whoa, slow down there, punk. There we go. All right, good deal. It's words two and three. And you have to get through the Atlantid storyline to get access to all these. I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning. I don't think I did. Alright, what kind of multi-tool you got for me, pal? 
and A class again. None of these are upgraded. So this is the only supercharged slot. So we'll go ahead and give this one a shot. So here's the one that we had. I'm going to go ahead and exchange it. And we're going to check it out. And of course, now my cell phone takes this moment to start exploding. Holy mackerel. Okay. So I've got the multi-tool and I'll show you what we're going to do with it. Let's see. Uh, Rahan rests upon the cool stone of the monolith. The voice pierce. piercing cries out in response to my touch. There is nothing to fear in her lattice. Let your eyes become... What do you think? Open? Glazed? Fried? I try to move my hand away. I realize I cannot. My fingers are webbed and living with living fragments of purple, crystalline infection that begins to spread along my arm. Soon I am enveloped. My eyes, my lungs, my blood, all frozen in amethyst. To my surprise, I do not die. So... Keep your eyes. Interesting. Do we give in, wait, or resist? I usually give in. I'm going to wait this time. I stay calm and try to relax. This will pass. As the hours tick by, I hear the echoes of countless entities. There were suns and it's vibrating as they surround me. Each note is so lost, so sad, they long for harmony. And then I am let go. The crystal falls away and I am returned. So that seems to be the right answer. Entities remain with me. There's sound echoing in my mind. Ooh, so what did I get? Did I get anything? Let's find out. I didn't get anything there. And nothing there. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I didn't get anything from that, so I'm going to try to resist next time. But in the meantime, we're going to go up to the space station and check out what we can do. Uh, da -da. Now, because one thing is blending into the next, I don't think we've done this before, but we're going to do it again. I'm going to go here. We're going to try to see what happens to this multi-tool. Problem is, I should have gotten the ordinance. Now I feel like a goober. All right. Sorry about that, folks. It turns out to be a really good multi-tool. I'm going to feel like a, a fool. But at least you'll know what planet you can go to. Oh my gosh, the ship's jumping in like that. Shaking the crap out of everything. All right. Minute is 12. All right, let's go over here. Upgrade one level. Okay. And then we're going to upgrade the slots. Okay, so that's what happened. They got two of the slots there. It becomes incumbent upon me to decide that's not going to work for me. All right, so unfortunately. We're going to do that. All right. So as we come up on the end of our half hour here of running through this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take myself back to my base, the new base I've created, and we'll go from there. All right. That's interesting. It saved me outside the space station. That is hilarious. I've never seen it do that before. I must have had my minutes off. But we're going to go here anyway. And I'll find a new system to go to to look for multi-tools after this. Though it is kind of a neat looking multi-tool, I have to admit. So, with Thoggy Station, I'll just remember that. Alright. So just to give you another update on what I'm doing, the reason I've discovered this uh, particular planet and the reason I decided to create a base there is you'll, you'll see why here in a moment. 
McCary Outpost, first of all. I didn't take a picture of the base yet. I will be doing that later. Because I'm not finished building it. It's going to be a pretty big, widespread base. I, I've only just started doing what I want to do here. I have a portal there already. I've got some power run that happens to be a, a C-class magnetic field nearby. I'm not going to need a lot of juice, though. There we go. That is the name of this planet. Nope times ten. And I did not name it. That is what it was named when I came here. That is one of the big reasons why I decided to come here. The second reason, it's a dissonant planet. The only storms here are gravity storms, so it doesn't really harm you in any way. And this is the third reason. This is the beauty of this planet. It's all these plants and stuff just fading in and out and glowing and stuff like that. I really like that about this planet. Very, very pretty. None of the animals are dangerous to me. They don't attack me or anything like that. So I've created on this little half moon shaped piece of land the starting of a base. I'll get more landing pads later on. Um, I didn't even realize there was a base over here. That is hilarious. Like a little campground thing. Anyway, because that's where my base computer is located. I haven't decided what I'm doing at the foyer here. Um... I haven't quite run it through yet, so I'm going up to the second floor. There's my portal. Some health. I'm going to do a third floor, and I'm going to make this whole area in here, second and third floor, into a museum. Um, there's going to be a lot of things placed on the floors and the walls along here. Posters and stuff like that. Um, things I've collected over the time. I'm going to put different flooring in the glass windows over here and put some either plants in here or wonder projectors showing off animals and stuff like that. That I've discovered along the way. Possibly planets. I don't know. Um, and then coming into here is going to be this big atrium area that I've got here. This is going to be more like an office area. Uh, something where we can do interviews. Maybe as I get into the big time multiplayer stuff. As I get more and more people. We'll set up chairing, uh, seating in here. And have invite people over. And we'll do stuff in here. But I've only just started this base. Um, I'm not a glitch builder. I am not that kind of a powerful... Uh, type of person in regards to that uh what i do is just basically uh build something for the utility utility of it only um we have our freighters and our freighters are much much more uh than that so speaking of which i didn't even bring mine in although mine is here someplace there we go and we'll allow all the little frigates to pop in there they go. So yeah, so I, I can do this up in my freighter, but this planet is just going to be that one type of planet that is really going to stand out in regards to, uh, you know, creating things and developing things. Uh, I've already gone through several battles on this planet with the uh, corrupted Sentinels, so really, really enjoying that and that aspect of the game too. And again, it's a beautiful little universe that I'm part of in here. Not to mention our community. Really, really appreciate the community. So as we look for more and more Atlantid multi-tools, um, as I come across them, I may put out little chats once in a while that say, Hey, I found one. Hey, I found one. And I'll try to show people those where they're at, especially if I can find a nice four-squared uh, supercharged Atlantid multi-tool. So, and like I said, in case none of you have ever seen my actual freighter before, Good Star Destroyer. I named it the Death's Head after one of the Star Destroyers that uh, inhabit Thrawn's, Grand Admiral Thrawn's fleet. And very... Oh, I should do that while I'm here. Now I can discover all the planets. There we go. So that's Nope X-10. And there happens to be a secondary... See, this is Dissonance. There happens to be a second Dissident planet over here. But it's very tall mountains, so it's very kind of hard to get around. But we got other planets. We got a Sporal one. We've got this Viridescent one, which is very similar to this one, obviously. Um, so they're kind of more peaceful. That one has uh, blue water on it. I'm going to check it out some other time. A Swamp planet and a Miasmic planet with fungal mode on it and stuff like that. So 
nothing special about this area. It is a two-star economy, but it is Corvax, so I can look for multi-tools on this planet as well. And, you know, Portal, like I said, I like the open floor plan here. This I like the most out of everything here. I can go outside if I wish. This is my quarters and my current library for everything, for all the things I've discovered along the way. So I kind of like it, but I do want a land-based office and everything like that, things that I can do other things on. So anyway, that is me. That is the end of this episode. I want to thank you all for watching. Again, another special episode. There's really not a lot going on here. But I wanted to at least, uh, you know, share some of what I've got going on and the fact that I've been spending days now looking for multi-tools. So if there's any questions or any problems, uh, please put them in the, in the, in the comments section, if you, especially if you've got questions. I do want anybody who has questions to go ahead and throw them in there. I'm really interested in what you all think about the upgrades to the Atlantid multi-tools. These specialized upgrades that nobody else seems to have but Granny. So get back to me. Tell me what you think. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care, everybody. Thank you very much.